YouTube as it going the goat house is back with five realistic NFL trades that could go down at any given time. The Brandon IU trade rumors once again are heating up. Feels like this is lasting forever. Once again, linked to the Pittsburgh Steelers. And it sounds like the Steelers and the Niners have uh, kind of agreed to a deal, the framework of a deal. The Niners kind of waiting to give that okay. What are they waiting for? Well, I believe they have a contract extension offered to Brandon Ayuk, and they're waiting to see if he accepts that because if they don't, they would rather him sign that than trade him. But if he doesn't accept that, then boom, I think they'll trade him. And trying to figure out the compensation, I went with two twos, one in 2025, one in 2026. Uh, and a seventh round pick. The Steelers are expected to have quite a few of those this year. Um, it has to be a little less than what the Browns and the Patriots were offering uh, because Ayuk was not agreeing to go to those teams. So the Niners lose a little bit of leverage, but I believe the Steelers kind of up their offer. Niners definitely are not giving them away. Um, so it still has to be a bit because he probably is worth the first round pick, but because of leverage, a little less here. So I think it's going to end up being around that range. Um, with, with uh, you know something like that, or maybe exactly that. We've done that in the past. We've predicted something like that in the past. Uh, but yeah, no players involved in this scenario. I think it's still possible. It's been sounding like the Niners want a player back, but the latest that I have heard, again, things can change, but the latest I've heard, there is in the latest deal that they're close to agreeing to, there's no players involved. So we'll see if that changes. Some rumors about George Pickens. Really don't think the Sewers want to move on from George Pickens, but... Uh, ended up with those three picks. Let's see if this finally goes down or if Ayuk. I feel like he, he's deciding right now. Does he accept that offer and try to go win a Super Bowl with the Niners or does he go to the Steelers? It seems like he is fond of them, Mike Tomlin. And Steelers have big plans for the future. They have a lot of future cap space. Even with extending Ayuk, that it, you know, it won't make that much of it. Even though it's a big price, it still won't look like it makes that much of a dent in what they have available. Uh, I think they'll be going after a quarterback, perhaps Dak Prescott. Uh, next year, free agency was not going to have ourselves too, too much here. But that's it's, this is part of the plan. Get a very good receiver for the future, for that future quarterback. Make themselves appealing because they have a lot of money to spend in, in the future. So we'll see if that goes down. That's the compensation I came up with, but that part is a little tricky. Uh, Matthew Judon trade rumors heating up once again is another one that's kind of lasted a little bit uh, for a little bit here but I was originally going to go with the Ravens I talked about it on Twitter I do love the Ravens going back to the Ravens as a legit landing spot I like the Colts because I think you can replace and be better than Samson Abukum that style of edge rusher that they lost but they do have a couple other pieces um, you know, and there, there's a number of teams that we talked about that, that, uh, could be interested. Some are a little on the fence because does he fit as a defensive end in some of those schemes? He's always been an outside linebacker, uh, edge rusher. So kind of fitting those, you know, more of a three, four scheme, multiple scheme, like the Patriots that works. Uh, I went with the Titans. Like I said, I was originally going to go with the Ravens, but there's two reasons I didn't. I can definitely still see it. That just seems like a Ravens move. Uh, but two reasons, Judon has one year left on his deal. And he needs more money. That's why it's nothing's going with the Patriots right now. They don't want to give him that money because, you know, they they easily could. I mean, it's not going to hurt them to dish out a little bit more money this year, but they might just want a draft pick instead because they're planning for the future. Uh, you know, I don't think it, a team could trade for him and extend him long term. I just don't get that feeling. I think a team, if they were to trade for him, they because he has durability concerns, he's getting up there in age, even though he's still very, very good. I think they would trade for him and just give him a big raise for this year. So the Ravens might be a little limited when it comes to that because they are limited in cap space for this year unless they, you know, restructure it, add void years, but then they're paying long term for him even while only having him for one year. I wouldn't recommend it with their future cap situation. So I look at a team as a number of teams. I look at a team like the Titans. They lost Arden Key for suspension for six games. That's pretty lengthy to me. And it was debatable. Like you could argue that they probably need an edge rusher anyways. Uh, you know, a starter opposite of Harold Landry because Arden Key is a guy that High-end rotational guy, could start, but high-end rotational guy can line up in different spots. So that's perfect world. And I think the Titans are trying to compete. The way they added on offense this year and the coaching staff they have, and they added with the the corners they've added, uh, defensive backs, I should say. So they need a pass rusher, and they don't have extreme depth you know, you know, behind Arden Key, you know, replacing him, I should say. Remember Landry two years ago was out for the whole season. So I think they badly need a pass rusher, actually. Um, so I thought the Titans, and they could afford him, they can bring him in and then sign him to uh, 
uh, or give him more money, give him a raise, or possibly extend him. I wouldn't really recommend anything lengthy there. Uh, I think he would go for a fourth round pick. It could be a third. I don't see anything more than that. It could be a fifth. I don't see anything less than that because it's a really good pass rusher, but does need a raise. Does have dur- some durability concerns. You know, he has his demands right now. Um, so guys like that really aren't going for a super high price. Uh, but I, I could see a third round pick kind of going back to the Ravens. What could make the, you know, more possible for the Ravens? Cause that's a legit landing spot. Uh, if the Patriots agree to, let's say the Patriots pay this year's salary, like what it is right now. And the Ravens add what they want to add, uh, in terms of the salary that could help them do it. It'd just be a little contradicting of the Patriots. Wouldn't you just rather give him some more money and, you know, but they probably know they're not going to win anything this year. But could they be a little sneaky? It's really going to depend on their confidence. But I, I thought for the reasons I explained, the Titans or, you know, again, some of these other, some of these other teams, the Falcons are a team to watch, but they're a little limited in cap space for this year. They're looking at Justin Simmons right now. Um, Titans made the most sense. So that's what I went with for Matthew Judon. A quarterback trade, former Ravens quarterback, one of the better backups in NFL, now with the Browns, who all who have Deshaun Watson, but backups also have Jameis Winston and DTR, second-year player from UCLA. So uh, they stockpiled on guys, I think, in case of injury, if those guys are healthy going into week one. And they move on from one. I don't think they're going to stash four quarterbacks. I don't think they cut DTR. Do they get trade offers for him? Maybe. It feels like Winston's the guy they want in the locker room. Uh, I think they could trade Huntley. Man, I thought about him going back to the Ravens, you know, because they, they're lacking that serious backup right now. Um, you know, I kind of showed in preseason game one. So could they, could the Ravens make a deal for their former quarterback? I could see that. But I thought the Chargers made a lot of sense. Herbert's fine, but you do worry about the foot injury. Uh, you know, and there's some people saying, uh, you know, some professionals in that field saying that he's risking further injury uh, if they say he's 100% after a quarter way through the season or a little less than that, then he's probably fine. Uh, but the Chargers backup situation, in my opinion, is not great, especially for fitting that scheme. Uh, Huntley, I think, could fit. He could fit. You know, he played for a hard ball. Go play it for a different one. But Greg Roman is the offensive coordinator who was the offensive coordinator with Baltimore, so we know he fits. So the Chargers made some sense. It makes sense for the Browns to pick up basically a free draft pick. Uh, and then you still have three quarterbacks worthy of playing if you need them to. Uh, I know one's a lot better than the rest, Watson, but um, I thought a fifth-round pick made some sense. Uh, I know quarterbacks are pretty valuable, so could it be a little more? I don't know if the Chargers trade that much for a backup or anybody trades that much for a backup. Fifth made sense, uh, but yeah, the Browns, I think they, unless someone gets injured, they might trade one of those quarterbacks. How about some running backs? Damian Pierce, uh, year one looked really good for Houston. They brought in a new staff last year. They actually used Singletary more than than Pierce, which was a little surprising. But after seeing how Singletary pl- played, you know, versus Pierce when he got uh, reps, I guess it made somewhat sense. Uh, you know, and they brought in Joe Mixon, who they think very very highly of. They also draft their running back. They have Cam Akers. You know, they they you know they have a number of running backs where if they wanted an extra pick, they can do this. If they felt like keeping Pierce because he did recur- return some kicks last year and he is a physical backup running back, they maybe they 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 could keep him. The Cowboys need a guy that could potentially start or be a high end too. Could have a battle there. Uh, definitely think they could be looking for a back. Uh, so that that one made some sense there. Not a fifth round pick again. Running backs don't go for a lot. He's not currently a starter for the Texans. Um, the new staff didn't love him last year. Not that they disliked him, but they didn't love him. He still had some yards. Um, so they brought in Joe Mixon. So I don't think they have a ton of leverage with this. It could even be less I, for a sixth. I think the Texans would rather keep him. Uh, fourth too much. Fifth, fifth makes some sense there, but you could argue they would just rather just keep him for that price. But that is one to watch. Uh, there are some teams that need running backs, and that uh, the Cowboys could be, um, you know, looking for for one, and maybe a guy like Pierce. Another guy I really like for the Cowboys. I almost had this one for the Cowboys, but so I'd watch out if you're a Dallas fan. You're liking that Damian Pierce one. Um, I would watch out for guys like AJ Dillon as well. Uh, he can definitely end up as a Cowboy. I like the Colts for him. I thought the the Cowboys or the Colts would land him in free agency. Surprisingly, end up going with the Packers, and then because they already got Josh Jacobs, but they did move him from Aaron Jones. But they had Mar- they had Marshawn Lloyd, but he was a little beat up in that preseason game. It's not long term at all. But yeah, if if they're worried about uh, Lloyd's health, because they really value running back, like having multiple, like a one two punch. If they're worried about Lloyd, his health. 
is durability. Now they'll probably the Packers that is probably will keep AJ Dillon, but um, Trey Sermon went down for the Colts, and uh, I don't think it's gonna be that severe. But they they, uh, they value that one two punch, you know, as well. I don't you know I don't plan on Jonathan Taylor getting injured at all. Uh, I plan on a big season for him, but. In the past, I guess you could say maybe he had some durability concerns. So I think, and they were interested, I, th- I thought, in my opinion, they maybe be interested in A.J. Dillon in, in free agency. Uh, so that one could make some sense. Getting a physical back, uh, I think it's an upgrade from Sermon, but he did look pretty good for the Colts last year, but he does have, um, you know, some you know, some injury going on. They do have Goodson as well, but I, I think they could use a backup running back here. Damian Pierce probably won't happen because in division, but you never know. We see those more and more these days. But there are a couple teams that could use a running back. These are a couple teams that could um, could trade it back. The Broncos have a long list of running backs. It just, man, which one do they actually want to trade? I, 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 I think they their feature back is still Javante Williams. Uh, they could possibly move on from P. Ryan. I don't know if anybody would trade for him. Maybe they wait for him to be cut, and they would rather trade for one of these guys perhaps. Uh, so we will see. Uh, but those are some running backs to watch for. I had a recent video talking about way more guys that could be traded, way more than the, the, these five. These guys are in that video, but ton of guys that could be traded. Check out that video. We have a bunch of recent videos previewing the upcoming NFL season. Can't wait to get to my final predictions and cannot wait for that in-season content. I am pumped. Let me know your guys' thoughts uh, on these trade scenarios down in the comments. Make sure to follow us on Twitter. Very important. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.